concern. Appreciate your time, Mike. Thank you. We, um, we'll go back to Ali in the studio for the moment. Yeah, they need all the luck they can get, don't they? Well, let's bring in our Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, in Melbourne. Treasurer, I mean, it's so tough, isn't it, seeing what's happening in south-east Queensland and north and New South Wales right now. I know you've made federal assistance available to those impacted. Is it going to be enough? And, and is there a limit to how much you'll offer? We'll continue to do whatever is necessary and required and is asked of us. Uh, uh, we'll partner with the Queensland Government. We've already made uh, payments uh, available uh, to, to those who need it. Uh, the disaster recovery payments are one-off, um, $1,000 payment. It's not means tested, it's tax, tax exempt. Uh, we're also uh, making available disaster recovery allowance for people who are unable to get to work. That can be a 13-week payment uh, and again that can be very, very very helpful for, for those families in need. Firstly, Ali, my condolences go to those families who have lost loved ones in these floods. Very distressing situation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, my thoughts are with all those families and small businesses who are affected. I was speaking just yesterday to Amiel, who runs a restaurant called Pilpel in, uh, in, in Redcliffe, and he's seen more than a million dollars worth of damage uh, as the floodwaters have taken over his restaurant. And uh, he's like so many other small businesses owners really worried about um, mm. getting those insurance claims paid out and, and getting his staff uh, to continued support. And then of course a big thank you to all those uh, emergency service workers who are doing so much on our behalf to help people in need. Yeah and look this is going to go on for a long time. The repair bill is going to be enormous. It's going to be billions. It's going to take a really long time and you just wonder you know how, how much mm. can people take. Hey look but it's, it's not the cr only crisis we're looking at this morning too. Let's talk about Ukraine. Mm. How real is Putin's mm. nuclear threat? Well this is another escalation in a very dangerous and concerning uh, crisis and obviously there's the humanitarian uh, fallout where hundreds of thousands of people are moving across the border looking for shelter. Um, there are people cowering in, in bomb shelters in, Ukraine, in Kiev right now as we, as we speak uh, and obviously hundreds of lives have already been lost. Uh, Putin's the aggressor here. Uh, there's no act of self-defence. He was not threatened by Ukraine and what he has done is completely unacceptable. That's why there's a strong coalition of countries who are coming together to seek to isolate Putin and his cronies uh, from the international financial system and indeed uh, from you know, from the family of nations. Last night, Ali, I spoke to my US counterpart, Secretary Janet Yellen, uh, and we agreed to continue to work closely in turning the screws on, uh, on Vladimir Putin uh, and his associates. OK, I know the, the PM is committed to funding weapons for Ukraine. That's a change in, in his position over the last couple of days. So you're saying here that you, you are looking at further sanctions and everything's on the table? We've already sanctioned over 350 individuals. We've also got commercial entities. Um, we're looking at other actions that we may be able to take. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to stop here, uh, just as uh, Putin's actions in Ukraine are not stopping here. Um, you know, he needs to get a message from the international community, from like-minded countries like the United States, like the United Kingdom, like Japan, like Canada, uh, like so many other European nations, that what he has done has breached the norms and the values um, that have helped keep uh, Europe prosperous and peaceful uh, for, for the last 70 years since the end of the Second World War. This is the, the single biggest threat. Um, that we have seen in decades uh, to peace and stability across Europe. OK, look, we know that peace talks are going to be held as early as tomorrow. Hopefully that something comes of that. Treasurer, really appreciate your time. There's a lot on your plate. Let's take you now to Ukraine.